God is good and his mercy and do it forever. We thank you for joining us on tonight, celebrating our church anniversary. I'm going to be your host, Pastor Daryl Jefferson. Y'all pray for me. Amen, because we know that I'm excited about what the Lord is doing. Praise team is going to come, but we'd like to welcome everybody to come on in. If you have not got a program, we got a few programs. Um, come on, let's help celebrate. Receive the praise team with a real good thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord, everybody. How many know God is good all the time? And all the time, God is good. We're going to open up to the old congregational song. Glory, glory, hallelujah, since I live my heart. Cry sometimes. 
time. I have to cry sometimes. I have to cry sometimes. I have to cry sometimes. A little awake at night. 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 receive him with a real good thank you, Jesus. Everybody say, God is a good God. Good God. So, yes, he is. Now, y'all know what come next. I know he is. <laughs> Truly, we serve a good God and a great God tonight. We all able can stand with me. Amen. Could you stand at this time as we go before? Amen. The God of our salvation. Come on, go with me. Our Heavenly Father, we come before you once again, not in our own name, but in the most holy and the most righteous name of Jesus. A name that's above every name, every devil every demon, every situation, every circumstance. Hallelujah. We just give you all the praise and we give you all the glory. We give you all honor because we realize that you are the creator and the sustainer of the universe. Not only are you the creator and the sustainer of the universe, but you're bigger than the universe. You're greater than this world, Lord Jesus. Your, your love, you got, your love is unlimited. Your peace is unlimited. Your joy is unlimited. Your protection is unlimited. Your salvation is unlimited. Lord, we just praise you today. We glorify you today. We magnify you today. We lift you up because we realize there is none like you. There's none to be compared to you. Nobody can heal. Nobody can live. Nobody can set free. Nobody can wake ways out of no man. Nobody loves us like you do, Jesus. Can't nobody do us like you, Jesus. Can't nobody love us. Can't nobody touch our soul. Nobody can touch our heart like you can. Can't nobody do us. Nobody. Oh, Lord, we thank you for being such a, a loving father. For being such a kind father, for being such a concerned father, for being such a forgiving father. We just praise you today. Look, all those on the sound of my voice, let your blood cover and let your powerful veil realize you are bigger than, than COVID. Amen. You're bigger than cancer. You're bigger than diabetes. You're bigger than. You're bigger, Lord. You're bigger. You're bigger. You're bigger. And you love us. In you, we live, we move, have our beings. Lord, we get ready to go along with you. Just look down to everybody on the sound of my voice and let your anointing, 
Let your anointing flow through this place. Destroy every yoke that's not like you. Hey, oh, Lord, you help us, Lord. Give us the wisdom. Give us the knowledge. Give us the understanding that we need you last and even day. And as we go, Lord Jesus, in this service, we invoke your Holy Spirit. We invoke your spirit. We invite you, Lord. You're welcome here, Lord Jesus. We need you, Jesus. We need you, Jesus. If there ever was a time, we need, we need, we need, we need you. Help us, Lord, to be the people of God you call for, that by our light shine, that men and doctors might see the light and have a mind that want to be saved. And as this Lord goes to the church, Lord, Lord, help us to love like you, Lord Jesus. Help us to love like you, Lord Jesus. Help us, Jesus. Help us, Jesus. Help us to have a grateful heart. We give you all the praise and all the glory. Lord Jesus, these and other bless we ask in Jesus' name. We say in Jesus' name. Somebody ought to give Jesus the highest praise. Thank you, Pastor. We thank God for all of everybody. Thank you for that. Sister Linda Robinson, come on. She's going to give us a welcome. Let's receive her with a real good thank you, Jesus. Okay, that was three people. Come on. Thank you, Jesus. Come on. In the name of Jesus, I would like to welcome you. If you did not feel welcome when you received the invite from Pastor Jefferson and the Bethel New Life Ministry. I would like to personally invite you on behalf of Pastor Jefferson, Bishop Slaughter, Bishop Wembley, uh, Pastor Jewett, and the other pastors that are in the house. We would like to welcome you personally and say that you're welcome to praise with us however the Holy Spirit leads you. You are welcome to worship, worship, worship. We here believe in whatever the Lord says to you, however the Spirit leads you, that's what you do. You don't hold back because you don't ever know when you'll get a second chance. So we would like to say you are welcome, welcome, welcome. Amen. that have come in, amen, we got some people that's joining us. If I have any pastors, um, evangelists, elders, if you want to come up here to the podium or pulpit, pit, please do. We got some opportunity for you to have a few remarks, but I'm just excited to see all the faces. Amen. That pitiful pandemic done put us in a crisis, but we winning this battle. Pandemic or no pandemic, we leaning on Jesus. And if I get the right church, we're going to have it tonight. Amen. And so come on, pastors. Where you at? Come on. I can't see you. Come on, pastors. I heard her if you're here. But if you like my bishop, he, he got a tendency to just want to hang out and let the Lord move. Amen. So we, I want to have the bishop, uh, uh, the disciples. Is that what they name? Um, disciples of Christ. Y'all come on. Give us a brief or short song here. That I felt God when it first showed up. I'm so glad we got People from all over my Facebook family, God bless y'all. We welcome you in. Share it, like it, and then we're going to need your undivided attention. So if you're here, get it in. Share it, like it, and let's continue to worship the Lord. Amen. Test it, test it. Singing with the angels in my, in my new 
simple pastor. I do my best to let the Lord lead, God and direct. And so y'all pray for me, because if it had been up to me, we'd have just came, said hi, bye, and went home. <laughs> Ate some chicken dressing and some potato salad. <laughs> but I appreciate everyone that's coming out. We've offered, we want the, the pastors to come up 
if you want to come, please do celebrate us, sit, hang out with us, um, want to continue to do this. I want to, I'm changing the program slightly, so if you got it, just don't worry about it. I want to continue to recognize our church history. I, on purpose, didn't put a number behind this celebration. I, on purpose, didn't put a number behind how long, how much, how long. I want this thing to be something of relevancy to what God is doing right now. And so as he continues to bless us, I, I feel honored and privileged to know that God is in the midst of this. And so as much as I believe God, I know that the devil always busy. And so we want to recognize the fact that we are all in here and that pitiful pandemic is not a problem to the Lord. So don't bring him here. We rest in our assurance on Jesus Christ. I'm not going to say that many more times, but whatever it needs to make you feel comfortable, do that. Yeah. Amen. But don't worry. We, we trust in the, the safety of the Lord. Yeah. I got a two sisters. I'm going to have Mother Josephine. She's going to come and give a few words. Um, I'll, I'll talk after she's done, and I'm going to have Deacon Warren follow behind her. A little bit of just a little flashback. Yeah. Amen. That, this mother, come on, mother. This mother has been faithful here. She's been here for the whole... Duration, come on, ma. And so she ain't as long-winded as me. <laughs> but you pray for her. Mother Josephine Goins. Here you go, mother. Pastors. Bless you. And to all of the bishops and pastors and to our own pastor and to and Pastor Sunday. Slaughter, <laughs> we're very happy to see all of you. And I'm just here to a few minutes to tell you where God has brought us from. We uh, came together as a small group of people, and in 2001, God gave us this, I mean, he didn't give it to us right then. He allowed us to come into the building, and we first went on Hackley and Fifth Street in a small church, and at that time, Pastor McGee was our pastor, and the, we outgrew that building at that time. Then we came here. We were only together about a year, and God blessed us. Nobody knew us. Nobody knew we existed, but God knew. And, the, and Deacon Warren and my niece, Fatima, we went to the bank where we uh, had our money, the little money we had. They said no. So we went to Fifth Third Bank, never heard of Bethel in their life. They gave us a loan of $200,000. And the, and the church was $250,000. So the Lutheran man, the guy from the Lutheran, he never heard of us, he said, God told me that you all needed this church. They gave us the $50,000. That's how good God is. Then for 11 years, we grew, we grew. We had 35 youth choir. And just like pastors always, his words say, when God start blessing, the devil start messing. <laughs> so after 11 years, things start going a little crooked. And we went here, we went there. The, the little nuclear, you all, most of you don't know, but it was the little nucleus say, we're not going to leave. But we left, and, but we stayed together. And we went to my sister's house, Mother McKinney. Nine women, Jesus took 12, but nine women stayed together. On a Saturday, we raised $2,200. Wow. We were determined. The next Saturday, we went to Sister May's house. I think we raised seven or eight hundred dollars. We were determined because when we, we left and when we came back, it was hard. We had um, nobody helped us because nobody knew us. And Sister Deffia Hannick, minister, Pastor Deffia Hannick, she came in. The heat was off, everything was off in the wintertime. To me, uh, we went downstairs. We had uh, the little heaters all over every table downstairs because that was all the heat we had. But we were determined. We stayed there for about a month. 
and me, you know, usually when you tell me I can't do something, that's when I do it. And, and I had gotten weary, and I said, I'm tired, y'all. We can't do this anymore. But God never let any of us get sick. And I, I mean, you could put ice cream on the table, and it wouldn't melt. It, that's how cold it was. And, and after a few months, when I said, I'm not doing it no more, I'm tired. And this little seven-year-old boy got up, and she said, I'm not going to be long, but he, you need to hear this. The little boy told us. We said, um, I said, we're not going to do it anymore. And at the end of the service, the minister, uh, Pastor Hannett asked us, do we have anybody have anything to say? But we were cold. We were ready to get out of there. So the little boy raised his hand. And his mama said, sit down. You don't have nothing to say. And Sister Melissa said, let that baby talk. And he got up, and he put his little hand in his pocket. It was Christmas time, and we couldn't eat anything in the church. And he had some candy, and he put his little hand in his pocket, and he moved it around. He took it out, and he looked at it, and his mama said, put the candy away. So I said, what is he talking about? It's zero degrees, and he's talking about candy. And so he kept doing it. And finally he said, I know I know how to take this wrap off of this candy. He said, I tried, and I tried, and I tried. He said, I put it back in my pocket. He said, because I couldn't do it. And then he turned around, and he said, but you know what God said? Seven years old, we were going to give up. He said, you know what God said? He said, when you try, and you try, and you try, and you can't do it, let me do it. Oh. He was seven years old. And I tell you, when that baby said that, heaters went flying, tables went flying, everything went flying. Because we knew then God told us to get out of the way and let him handle it. And about two months later, I didn't know Bishop Bankhead then. He called me. You know, I barely could drive, and it was wintertime. And he said, Mother, come to my church. Remember that, Bishop? And we went there on a Wednesday, on a Wednesday night. And then that's when he came and, and took over and carried us for two or three years, I think. And we had a good time with him. But it was hard because, you know how you, when you have two different kids, we didn't want him to leave and they didn't want him <laughs> to leave. So it was really hard on him. So he brought us to, um, uh, I thank God that he took us. And uh, then the apostle came, but it was under apostle's leadership that the church was given to us, literally given to us. We owed over almost 200000 pretty close to $200,000 on this house. And they told us if we give them $5,000, they will override the, the thousands of dollars. <laughs> and that's why I know God knew we were serious about what we were doing. And, and it started with nine women, and we were determined. And thank God Bishop brought us on. With the, the Lord brought us on to B Bishop. And then after Bishop, Deacon Warren took over. We were without a pastor again. And Deacon Warren was that Joshua that just took us. He just took it. He wasn't a minister, but he took us wherever we needed to go. He got ministers for us. Every Sunday we had somebody here to, to show us. And then in the end, he, Bishop told us about our pastor. And he came in running, and he hasn't stopped yet. And Deacon Warren would tell you all the things that God had blessed with us, blessed us with in only a year and a half. And and when you get done, we would like for you to look to see what where God has brought us from. Because we went from zero with the help of the pastors. Now hold Thank on, Deacon. Hold on. Thank you. Thank you, Mother. God bless you. Love that. Love that. Come on. Put them hands together. Love that. God is good. We're going to have a selection. I'm going to have Zion. That they're on, that they would come, get themselves together, get ready however you want to do, give people a chance to get up here as I kind of piggyback on Mother right there. Y'all come on, get ready, because there's an anointing in the building. 
And what I, what I believe about God, God ain't never made no mistakes. I call it mistakes. I make sure I emphasize myths. So he ain't never made no mistakes. And God has honored us and he's given us opportunity because I believe that everybody is meant to be saved. I was talking this morning, I was using all them cute phrases like give your life to Christ and let the Lord use you. But no, he wants you saved. He said he sent Jesus that he might save us from our sins. So I don't care how long you've been in church, if you're not saved, then we got some work to do. Amen. So whatever we're going to be, we're going to be saved. Not like I made it up when I got in church and told you what it needed to be. Not like somebody decided they were going to do in a meeting one night. Not how to huddle up in the back room and change a few things. We're going to do it like the Bible say. And if we stick to the Bible, it says, let every man be true. And so I'm honored by that. Thank you, Mother. Bless my soul. That's how we celebrate. Amen. Get that out your system because we got to get on where God got us to go. Amen. At this time. Let's turn it into the hands of this fabulous choir. All the way from 1282 4th Street in the lovely state of Michigan in Muskegon. Let's receive them with a real good thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Come on and clap your hands for Jesus. I said, praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise oh, you can do better than that. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, Praise the Lord everybody. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Pray for us in Jesus' name, amen. 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 Come on, everybody. Put your hands. We're blessed in the city, we're blessed in the field, we're blessed when we come and when we go, we, we, we cast down every stronghold, sickness and poverty must see, devil is defeated, we are blessed, we're blessed in the city, we're blessed, we're blessed in the field, yes, we're we blessed are. when we come and when we go, we, 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 we Let's go. 
Watch this. I'm blessed. I'm blessed. You blessed. You're blessed. Everybody, Everybody blessed. Can we say it again? I'm blessed. I'm blessed. You blessed. You're blessed. I know you're blessed. Everybody's blessed. We're blessed. We're blessed in the city. We're blessed in the field. You will last when we come and when we go. We 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 down every strong yeah, yeah, yeah. sickness and poverty must see. For the devil is defeated. We are blessed. For you that are sick in your body, I just want to say this and we're going to sit down. I want you to receive this stuff. Say, I'm healed. I'm healed. You healed. You're healed. Everybody's, Everybody's healed. healed. That's what he died for. I'm healed. I'm healed. You healed. You're healed. Everybody's, Everybody's healed. healed. We're blessed. Blood. We're blessed in the city. We're blessed in the field. We're blessed, We're blessed when we come and when we go. go we can't me to sing a solo, but I think they meant so low nobody wouldn't be able to hear. Come on, Deacon. I'm going to have Deacon come. Come on, somebody come wipe these mics down for me. Thank you. Amen. We want to keep it moving. Deacon Warren, come on, have word as the Lord sees fit. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord again. I won't be before you long. I won't be as long as my auntie. They call us Josephine and Joseph. <laughs> so, so, <laughs> so, I just want to uh, give a few words on where we came and where we are as far as the anniversary. Um, I just, I, I was here in the beginning in 2001 or three, two, whatever it was, but I left for about 12 years. And God led me back to Bethel New Life Ministry. Years ago, when I was a, a deacon over at another church, I used to talk to other uh, deacons in, in the community and, and, and never knew why. But at the same time, they was going through uh, changing pastors and under new leadership. And they would always tell me how to, how they had to go about when they were looking for pastors or uh, trying to get a new pastor for their for they church. And I never knew that at some point that those, uh, what they were saying to me, that I was going to have to use it one day. Yeah. And one day I, I had to, I, uh, we had, a, we had a, a apostle was here, and for whatever reason, he, God led him into a different direction. And what, we, what I had to do was to sit down and, and, and then, God came back, brought back to my remembrance that what, what the other deacons were saying to me, that I had to use those gifts. Those gifts was I had friends that was in the ministry. I had brothers that I call, I call them friends, but they was brothers, such as Bishop Dave Wimley, uh, Pastor Jerry Riley, Bishop Bankhead. I had those guys that I would, you know, bank, Mr. Bishop Bankhead told me one day, I don't know if he remember, he said, whatever you need, um, just let me know. And I sat down with Bishop Wimley one day, first time he ever bought me something to eat. <laughs> he and I went to breakfast. And he told me, he said, Joe, whatever you need, just, just let me know. So he started giving me advice on looking for pastors. He said, I have a couple pastors. He said, have you thought about Pastor Jefferson? I said, I ain't thought about nobody. 
at that time, we had Pastor Brown came over, uh, other pastors come over to preach and teach the Bible study. Uh, I even tried teaching Bible study. <laughs> but, <laughs> Bishop, you know how that went. <laughs> but anyway, um, after, I think it was like four, five, six months, Pastor Jefferson came over, I think, in November of 2019. And I asked, I think, Tamir asked Bishop Wimley, uh, could we just keep it for a few months? And in that time, I think Pastor Jefferson just already had been, God had already been talking to him, I believe, because I think I went over to the house one day, which Pastor Jefferson is my brother-in-law and, and my sister is his wife. So we we're trying to move along quickly. But through it all, we, we decided that we would land Pastor Jefferson here at Bethel New Life. <laughs> within that, within those, within within this last year and a half or eight months or however long it's been, I worked so many years at, well, it was, it was S.D. Warren, Sappy Fine Paper. I worked there. I didn't work that hard as Pastor Jefferson may have me working here. <laughs> <laughs> through the through the year and a half, eight months or whatever. Pastor Jefferson have touched every area of this church. I mean, we have had we have had men men come up climbing through the balcony. I mean, climbing through the attic, rewiring, um, re doing put all, all the lights is in this building is basically brand new. All the electrical is basically brand new. We have basically painted every room in this building. We have not only that, we have remodeled basically every room in this building. And when they say Pastor Jefferson was a God gift to Bethel, then so I just I mean, it's not, it's not much more that I can say because I'm not, and I don't want anybody to think that I'm bragging about what, what we've done. But like my, like my auntie said, when you go from putting heaters, sitting up in heaters in a cold church, we put about $6,000 into that boiler downstairs. And guess what? Most of it was rolled off. And so, I don't, I don't know about the people of Bethel, but this time I, I sit up in the bed. I shed a tear because I know what God has done for Bethel New Life. And like Pastor Jefferson say, Bethel ain't for everybody, but Bethel is for me. Because a couple years ago, when I came back to Bethel, Bethel wasn't a place that I was looking to go to. But God. God led me here. When I came back, my wife was somewhere else. She never once knocked me about moving my membership from where we were. She never once complained to me. But she's always here to hear. And I can say to Pastor Jefferson, from the work he's done here, when I came to Bethel, Bethel, I don't know, I'm going to say it anyway. When I came to Bethel, Bethel had $355. We went from $355 to putting almost $40,000 in repairs. That's called for a standing ovation because I don't know a lot of churches that could have done that. And guess what? Most of that money, the amount that we paid, 
I mean, the amount was that we can value it as, it wasn't paid for a dollar. Brother Lambu came in. Brother Willie Diggs came in. They even had the nerve to put me on a lap. But guess what? We got the work done. And through it all, God is still in control. Oh, Thank you, Lord. Amen, amen. Come on. Don't make a shout yet. Yeah, don't make me shout. I'm just Thank this you. fine. Don't push me. Don't push me. I ain't, that, ain't that far. But we thank God. We thank God. Hold, hold on a minute. Hold on a minute. It, it ain't time to clap yet. It ain't time to clap yet. Y'all sit down. Y'all sit down. Y'all sit down. We, 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 I, I certainly appreciate what God is doing. And it's marvelous and, I, I, and all that's good. But, but they left off some of the best parts. All right. And I ain't got time to tell you all of it. But up to 20 to 25 people all right. that went down in water. Yes, sir. Tell it, Pastor. In Jesus' name. Yeah, yeah, tell it. Yeah, tell it. That, that, that's why he sent me over here. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's good to have all the carpet. I got to have some carpet. I got to put some paint on the wall. We got to fix the lights. But it's all about souls. And when we, when we get to that point, that's when the battle begins to start. It's all about the soul. I love this church. This is my family, man. I, so I thank God for them. We're going to share some more, but we want to just keep it going. Look here, I got a couple things I want to do while I'm right here. I'm all off the program. Don't even read it no more. Praise the Lord. Pastor Brown. I got a couple things. Come on, Pastor. This is my mama. But bring the whole box. Bring everything. That way it won't take so long. Praise the Lord. We thank God. We got something here. I got many more I want to do. But I want to have Brother Lambu. Come on up here, Brother Lambu. Come on, Brother Lambu. This brother right here. On just yesterday, he put in 12 hours, brothers. 12 hours. I ain't talking about with a lunch break either. He put in 12. And if I, be, I can't even begin to express my gratitude towards this man of God. And he ain't never asked for nothing. I got to make him take gas money. I got to hide it under his seat in, in his car. He comes in here from sun up to sundown. The pew you sitting on probably as solid as it is because he worked on it. And so I honor this man of God. It says, Beth, Brother Calvin Liberal, on behalf of Pastor Daryl Jefferson and Lisa Jefferson and the Bethel New Life family, we want to thank you for all your hard work and labor of love. May the Lord continue to strengthen you. Come on, put them hands together for Brother Lambu. And I pray to God that I teach Bethel to have the right spirit. I teach them to have the right spirit. Don't, don't, don't let that, that devil get in because I got some more to do. But this is, this, I just want to do this because this is what God put on my heart for the day. I had some more to do, but, that, but they messed me up. Deacon Joe Warren. Again, he was, he was not telling y'all no fib when he said he worked harder here than he did at his job. Him wasn't lying. This brother get up in the morning running. He picking up parts and pieces. He, too, was here late yesterday working, trying to finish this edifice up. We've been waiting on y'all. We've been waiting on y'all. We just wanted y'all to show y'all some love. Y'all show us some love. But this brother right here is a faithful brother. If I don't know nothing else, I know he on my side. 
If I don't know nothing else, I know he got my back. Amen, somebody. So while y'all be talking to him about me, be careful. While y'all be bad mopping me to my deacon, be careful. He got some work to do. He know what he need to do. Me and him talk all the time. He know it's some more fun. He know it's some more fun. Don't be surprised when you hear the next step. Because his next move is going to be his best move. Amen. So again, to Deacon Joe Warren, on behalf of my wife and myself and this Bethel family, just another, we thank you for all the hard work and love of labor. May the Lord continue to strengthen you, my brother. Love you, Deacon. Love you. While I'm here, we're going to continue with to let the brothering have some words of encouragement. We're going to continue to have the family. We got a good preacher here all the way from Lansing, Michigan. Don't y'all sleep on Lansing. Praise the Lord. This bishop come all the way. He got the highway smoking. Trying to get here to love on us. We thank God for that man of God. Amen. We hooked up in more ways than one. We go back a long way. Me and his father, we played golf together, ran around this country together. His father went on to be with the Lord, and he took over with nothing missing. Amen. Ain't God good? And so we honor him and his family. He has members that go to his church that's related to members that go to my church. And so we've been just hooked up. We've been trying to get him here, but that... That that one thing they got going around keeps shutting the country down. Y'all heard about it? They keep making folks stay at home. Y'all heard about it? Put you on quarantine, make you miss some money at work. Yeah, that thing. Been messing up everything. And so we want to be glad for today, and I'm honoring today. And so I'm going to have, I'm going to have Bishop Wimley to come first. That's my pastor. Hey, hey, b brothers, pastor, don't tell me who you're over until you tell me who you're under. No, don't tell me who you're over until you tell me who you're under. And this is my man of God, so when I need something, I call him. Yes, I do. When I don't know how to do something, I call him. He ain't never stuck. I had, I, I'm going to say this, and I'm going to give him the mic, because I said I, I was tongue-in-cheek, told Bethel, if they don't straighten up, I'm going back to Zion. I told, I said, and I called Bishop, right, because you know we just talking and we just having fun. And so Bishop said, you ain't coming back here. You got work to do. Amen. Come on, receive my pastor with a real good thank you, Jesus. Listen, God is a good, good, good God. What a beautiful job, Pastor, you and the saints are doing here. It is amazing. But that's what God will do for you here. He'll shock you and amaze you. He'll do things that you don't understand. He'll pay off churches and pay off bills and make a way out of no way. I mean, this place look good. Beautiful job. Beautiful job. But he said something that caught the attention. If you can get 20, 25 people to be buried in Jesus' name. Y'all come on here. Y'all come on here. Listen, I don't, I don't know how many of them got the Holy Ghost, but a lot of them got the Holy Ghost at my church because before he got his pool, come on, y'all. What a blessing. That is, that, is, that is the job of the church, is to be able to be witnesses. And so you need to act like who you are. You're blessed everywhere you go. You, you might not feel like it, but he said you're healed. You might be broke, but he said you're wealthy. And so if you're going to believe anybody, would you please believe Jesus? If it, somebody said, it might not come true. Listen, still believe it. It may happen to your kids. Listen, I am very honored to be here today. And I'm so glad that God blessed my son and my daughter to be down here. Even though I miss them. 
They was not pillows. They were pillars. Are y'all with me? So I had that talk with Joe. And you know, I was talking with him, but Joe took me serious. <laughs> I want all that serious. I'm, I, I remember telling him this, and it might make, make some of y'all feel uncomfortable. I said, you got to get an apostolic preacher in here. I said, if you want to change things, get you an apostolic preacher in here. And once he did that, y'all see what happened. Because when you got somebody that love the Lord like Pastor Jefferson and love God's people, that's a difference maker. Amen? Listen, I thank God for ZT. Are you with me? Stand up on your feet right now. A portion of my wonderful, wonderful, wonderful family. It, Linda, it's all right. We family. <laughs> we family. All y'all could have got up. Amen. Zion mean that city on the hill, that light that can't be hid. That's a beautiful thing. Listen, so I just want to tell y'all, I thank God for you and what he's doing. Can I, can I introduce somebody to y'all? I, I won't let her sing. Y'all don't really want that. But I won't let her sing. I call her the silver head fox. First lady, Deborah Wimbley. Would you please stand at this time? That's my wife. Pastor, I'm going to sit down. But the woman, the woman funny. Bishop, you know, after, you get, after years go on, you get a little bit bigger in some areas. And I'm trying to do something to do something about that. But I asked my wife, I said, how did this vest look? I said, can I get away with it? She says, uh, loosen a button. I said, how many? She said, all of them. <laughs> I just love her, love her, love her. Listen, Pastor Jones, would you please stand up? Evangelist Sent, would you please stand up? These are the people that's helping me, Pastor. I'm a blessed man. I'm a blessed man. Well, along with the other ministerial staff, I appreciate y'all. And God bless you and keep you. Heaven smile on your pastor. Thank you for this little time to tell him how, how glad and how proud I am of this wonderful man of God. Hey Amen. We thank God for you. Any, any other pastors want to come? Didn't I have a particular roster? Just want to have you come, Pastor. Elder, Bishop, want to have someone? Come on, Bishop. Bethel, I'm home. <laughs> Definitely give it to the Lord who is the head of the church and the savior of the body of Christ Jesus to pastor and first lady Jefferson. Much respect and love to you both and to mama over there. Amen. To all of God's people, to our brothers in the gospel bishops, all of you pastors, to all of you and to my lovely wife, Sister Cynthia, First Lady Van Ken. Amen. Truly, it is good to see what God has done and what he's going to do. We have the pleasure to labor in this ministry for three years. Amen. don't regret not one day and to see what the Lord is doing and going to do I'm excited in the world that we live in we need every church open to preach and teach the gospel of Jesus Christ we are in a pandemic 
where pastors is all about themselves. And we praise God for this pastor, all about the kingdom of God. Just don't know how blessed you are. Again, as I look back over these pastors, I can say without a shadow of a doubt that they are living what they preach. Come on, somebody. I don't have to follow behind them. I don't have to slide up at night. I believe in my heart that these men of God is baptized in Jesus' name and filled with the Holy Ghost and living a saving, sanctified life. Come on, give God some praise. That's a blessing. And you ought to be happy that God didn't give you a bootleg. Come on, you ought to be happy that he, these men of God is not sleeping with your children and taking your money. And if you are happy, you ought to be more obedient. Come on, I'm, I'm preaching to all of us. Because it's amazing to me. I've never noticed this Pastor Rogers until I got into pastoral. They'll follow a crooked preacher in a heartbeat. But they'll walk away from somebody that's trying to teach them the ways of God. Come on, somebody. But it is an honor to stand here to see what God has done to this place and to God's people. To my mothers, you already know I love you. I thank God for you. Sister Melissa, I see you. Sister Melissa, boy, you got to be some kind of man, Pastor and Sister Melissa. Woo wee Good God. Oh, there she go. <laughs> Sweet as gold, but she ain't going to hold you up. Come on, somebody. And Sister May, it is wonderful to see your lovely face again. Oh, my goodness. She looked like she didn't step back 20 years. Good God Almighty. But I say this as I take my seat. I sung a song this morning, and I wish that we all could sing it together. The song says, I'm going to do all I can for the Lord. I'm going to do all that I can for the Lord. I'm going to do all I can for the Lord till I can't do no more. I'm going to do all that I can for the Lord. Saints, this is the stretch. This is the home stretch. And I'm telling you now, if you are playing church, you'll get ran off the road. Now is time for a praying church. A church that's living what they are preaching and teaching. This pandemic has moved the cover off the ants. Come on, somebody. And now it's time for the real saints to stand up. The reason why I say what I say, because the devil is not shame of what he's doing. He's in the cartoons. He's in our schools. He didn't flip some of our people's minds and our families yeah. that they are not what God say they are. Yeah. Now it's time for the church to stand on true holiness. Yeah. Come on now. As I get ready to take my seat, everybody got rights now. Come on, somebody. And it appears that a lot of these rights is going against God's word. Mm -hmm. But who going to stand on the truth? After we have beautified these buildings and put in new this and that, have anybody been changed from the inside out? I love you, Bethel, and I pray that God bless you with many, many more years. But the work is just started. God bless you in Jesus' name. Amen, amen. Come on, thank you, Bishop. Great words, great words. God is good, and it's showing up in the service. It's showing up in the cities and in these families, and I thank God for that. Any more pastors? 
that want to have a couple of words. I get it. I, I, I don't mind bragging. I call it being godly proud. Yes. Praise the Lord. Y'all pray for me. Yes. Say what you want to, but he said, if I seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, <laughs> he said he's going to add some stuff to me, and he know, he know I had a hoopty when I got out of high school. I'm past the hoopty now. I want, I want something that got some, some bling bling. <laughs> Praise the Lord. He know I don't want to shop at the nearly new, all oh, over 30, over 30, at the nearly new all the time. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I'm serving God for all the benefits. <laughs> yes, I thank God, Bishop, for the magnificent words, man. He helped my spirit. Yeah. Bethel sound like y'all heard a repeat, didn't it? Oh, yeah, we got to live holy. We got to live right. You can't fake holiness. Your real character will show up. You can't pretend this thing too long. That word you've been trying to avoid or come out. That car, why your car keep going down Crack Boulevard every weekend? <laughs> Praise the Lord. We're going to get us a new car. God is good. Any more pastors? You ain't got to be our brother Jewett, Bishop Pastor Jewett. I see you, sir. God bless you. Amen. We thank any more pastors. I don't recognize everyone, but I just want to give you time. Anybody from the family? Now, 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 listen. I got a stopwatch. Anybody from the family want to have a few words? Pastor Brown, come on, have a few words. I'm going to call you up. You can speak for the team. Amen. I'm going to have Lady J follow behind her. Yeah. The word is coming, so y'all be brief. Restored upon us, but thank giving honor first into the, all the pulpit guests and Bishop and uh, uh, Bishop Slaughter and B Bishop Wemley and all the ministers and evangelists and elders, deacons and all the people of God. Just like to say, th praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. I stand before you, thanking God for just this day. I thank God for what He's done. And what he's going to do. You heard the history of the church and where it came from and what it's about now. But I just like to say I thank God for allowing me to be the vessel that he used to produce a man of God. Now, I grant you, when it happened, didn't have a thought. That scripture comes to my mind is that eyes has not seen, ears has not heard, said neither has it entered into the hearts of men, the things that God has prepared for them that love him. And first of all, i just like to say I thank the Lord for saving me. Picking me up one day, put, turning me around and placing my feet up on a rock and establish my goings. That I may be able to produce something like that. That God can use. He saw it before I did. I didn't know nothing about it because I was doing something different. But he saw fit to save me that I may be able to introduce him to what he wanted him to do. And I thank God for that. And I thank God for the place that he has placed him in. I thank God for the people of God. I thank God for Bethel. I thank God for Zion. I thank God for all of you that has came out today to help us to celebrate because we have seen some great growth. We have seen, we seen the harvest that has came in. And we just thank God for that. We, but we realize there are more work to be done. There's always work to be done in the house of the Lord. And we willing and we have claimed that we will be doing that work for the Lord until he come. But we thank God for you. And we, we honor the Lord to this evening. We honor everybody that has came. We don't want to get out the way because I do have a gift to gab. And I'm going to get out the way because when you start talking about the goodness of the Lord, I get excited. 
and I can say something, but I'm going to sit down because my pastor said it shall be short winded. I thank God for you. You continue to pray for Zion as we, I mean, Bethel, as we continue to pray for you, Zion as a whole. Amen. God bless you. Amen. We thank God for the, the words of encouragement that we have a special selection from our good friend at One Way. Amen. Bishop. Amen. They told me. I just followed the instructions. Is that wrong? <laughs> yeah. Is that wrong? If that's wrong, we can move along. If it's wrong, we move along. <laughs> but we just wanted to make sure we didn't miss anything that we had set up for the, for the family. Amen. And so we want to continue to lift up and magnify the Lord. It's when you know when you know folks got that ability to let that that the, the singing. Bishop Wimley taught me some coming through church. If the ministry can't get you, the God's songs will say something that'll bless you. And so we're gonna have I'm gonna have Bishop Wimley come and receive our offering. Let's receive him with a real good thank you, Jesus. A good God, Amen. Oh, I already like this place. I see big baskets. Pastor, that's what I'm talking about. Listen, listen, I thank God for all of you that are here, and you're here uh, to be blessed. This is not a stick up. This is not a hole up. This is a bless up. According to the word of God, and, and, and can I do this, y'all? Pastor for years talked about money when they give me a chance to talk about money and giving. And, and, and I apologize for making some of you very uncomfortable. And so I went a little deeper into uh, studying about giving. And giving is not based upon it is a commandment for you to do. And giving is not based upon uh, that it is New Testament or Old Testament. Giving is based upon love. And so whenever a person loves, so you, you say he left two commandments that you should give, right? And he talked about giving yourself, that you should love your neighbor, right? You should love God, you should love your neighbor with all your heart, all your soul, and all your mind. The number 10 represents all. So when a person gives tithes to God, you gave everything. I probably need to go home now, right? Because there's some people that don't believe in it. But, you know, I stay with Sister Wembley. And if she, she doesn't really have to pay no bills. But the day I ask her for something and I don't have it, I already told the church, we got to have a talk. Because somebody going to have to leave. <laughs> Are y'all with me? These lights the gas, everything that is happening here. You see they're expanding, the camera work, everything that God is doing. They've remodeled every room in this wonderful, magnificent church. Amen? It, it ain't a hallelujah that did that. They said nine women raised $2,200. Are y'all with me? Because they had a mind they want to give, right? Giving comes from the heart, right? Some people say, I can't afford to pay tithes. You can't afford not to. You're going to be in a boat that you're going to be stuck in for the rest of your life, paddling without oars. You have to remember that giving is a wonderful thing. So what I want to do, Sister Wembley, would you do me a favor? I know you, somebody over there that got a good pen for me, right? Uh, Zion Tappanuckle, they asked me to take up the offer. So we're going to start off. I think my secretary wrote this right, so you don't mind me opening this. We're going to start off from the church with 200. And my wife going to write out one for 100. Now, now, y'all say, Pastor, you just be talking like this. You just be doing like this. I tip good. Because I want to sow into somebody. Listen, Pastor, no, I already talked to him. We didn't talk about it, right? I'm going to build a brand new church on the corner of 4th and Mason. So I have to sow into good ground. I have to 
plant seeds, amen? Maybe you want a house. Maybe you want a car. Maybe you want to be healed, amen? The Bible said in the book of Galatians, you shall reap if you faint not. Now, read above that. It said every pastor or teacher that sows the word of God into you, if you continue to give to him, Jesus, if you continue to plant seeds in him, then what happens is something fantastic happens. You be blessed. Your family be blessed. The church be blessed. It's not a coincidence. It is the word of God. He shall supply all of your needs according to his riches and glory. All right, that's enough. Look at your neighbor and say, I love you. And then now look at the other side and say, please don't be stingy. Is that all right, y'all? <laughs> God is good. William, let me get that. Got to be first partaker. Is there any other, anybody, any pastors or anything? You ain't got to tell me what you're giving, but I believe in us being first partakers. Whatever you have, you give. We don't ask for no, 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 no lane, no number, no, no significant. Thank you, pastor. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Amen. It is all about us giving. Amen. We have to be first partakers. I tell people, listen, uh, 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 executive boards and people that are in position, they should be the first one to give when the pastor get up. You can't, you can't help nobody else if you ain't the one that's first in line. Uh, uh, tell your neighbor right quick, you're next in line for a miracle, a blessing, a breakthrough. Uh, don't, 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 don't get all, don't get all tighten up talking about I ain't got it you should say my God will supply yeah Deacon Warren no you can't ride on the back of the bike that I was on when you was, I was trying to get away go on my brother amen Deke, Deke would you uh, show us what we do in reference to Outside, out, inside. Am I all right, Pastor? You want me to give it back yeah. to you? See, this is all new. This pandemic new for us. Okay. So they want us to go to the outside aisles. Thank you, Pastor. And come on around. Amen. Oh, outside, that's my they wonderful wife. To the walls and come out that way. Amen. Is that all right, everybody? Tell me that again, T. Outside out, and then we'll do the center out last. Outside out, would you please stand, face the walls, and come through this way. Jesus, that shineth in me, that shineth in me, to show up in me, to show up in me, to show up. In me, you show up. In me, Jesus is the light that shineth in me. That shineth in me, Jesus. The light that shineth in me. Shining in me, shining in me. Show up in me. Show up in me. Show up in me. Show up in me. Help me. me say Jesus, 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 show up, 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 Jesus, the more I call him, 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 Jesus, the more I call him,
what I feel. Chill up. Show 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 up. Anybody that didn't feel like walking, if you didn't feel like walking, amen, amen. God is good. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for this offering. Let it bless and meet every need according to your plan of building the kingdom. Lord, we thank you that you always answer prayer. You always make a way. Multiply what they've given right now. Lord, the seed that they planted, let it grow into fruition in every home, in every life, in every family. Let it be able to apply the promises and the principles that you have in giving that souls are saved, life are changed, and hearts are mended, and bodies healed. In Jesus' name we pray. Let the church say amen. Amen. Pastor. Amen. We thank God for that. I got my act together now. I know what's going on. Praise the Lord. I'm going to have Bishop to come up, Bishop Rogers, and then he will take it from there. Amen. Come on, Bishop. Praise the Lord, everybody. Uh, you clap for me now. Come on and give the Lord a hand, praise. Because he's greater than I am. Hallelujah, Jesus. Pastor, we're so thankful to be here. Amen. To help you all celebrate. Amen. The church history. Amen. Um, I don't know much about the church here. Amen. The last time I came, uh, Pastor Gordon was here. So y'all know that's been a long time. Amen. And, and I guess he was supposed to get it. Amen. But the Lord didn't see fit. When God has something for you, can't nobody else have it but you. Amen. So we're thankful to come, amen, and help you all celebrate, amen, uh, your church history. Amen. I, I was listening to the mother talk. Amen. And how you have those that go back uh, through the tough times. Amen. And oftentimes people don't know what it took or what it takes. Amen. To take a ministry to another level. Amen. Some people come in when the hard work has been done. Amen. Praise the Lord. You have a few faithful that will be with you through it all. And then you have some that jump on when you just about got it done. Amen. But we thank God for all of you. Amen. Playing your part. Amen. Because we need the faithful ones. And we need the ones that ain't that faithful. They, they help keep us on our knees, Bishop. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Amen. I'm thankful to know, amen, that one day the Lord called me out, amen. I didn't want to go, amen, but the Lord called me out, and, and when he calls you out, you already know, amen, that you're going to go through trying times, amen. I was telling the saints of God, being a pastor, when I read about it, Amen. It's one of the most strenuous jobs there are out there. 
Amen. Pastoring kill a lot of men. They die before their time because stress kills. Amen. Uh, I was I was thinking you all. Amen. I, I said, as a pastor, you have many children because you're still my child, even if you're older than me. Because God has placed me over you. Amen. And when you're pastoring, you know, sometimes maybe we don't think about it, but when you have many children and you're pastoring for a while, you're going to lose some. Amen. At one point in time, it just seemed like I was doing funerals, man. Just praise the Lord. Like you're just doing funerals, and then somebody else called, and can you do this funeral? And somebody else called, can you do this funeral? And then it starts to hit home. And now you have some leaving from within. And that's when it hurts. Amen? Because you lose some good ones. Amen? So pastoring is not an easy job. Amen? But it is a good job. It's something that, amen, that God calls a man out to do. <clears throat> and what the saints of God, and I'm trying to help you all, amen, what your job is, is to make this job for us as easy as possible. I don't hear nobody saying nothing. <laughs> Amen. Because if you want to keep us around for a long time, because remember, how many love? How many love Pastor Jefferson? I'm talking about Bethel. I know we love him, but I'm talking about, I'm talking about Bethel. How many love him? Amen. Because watch this. When he go, Ain't no telling who you're going to get. You better appreciate who you have while you got them. Amen. You don't know who you, you don't know who coming. Because the, the saints in the Old Testament thought Saul was going to be good. Amen. So you appreciate who you have while you got them. Help them live a long time. Don't be one to help cut their life short. Amen. I didn't get up to, I just got up to sing, y'all. I don't claim to be a singer. Amen. Uh, sometimes I sing in key. Sometimes I sing a key. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. So I have to try to make sure I find the right key. Amen. To, to help me out. Amen. So you all pray for me. I'm going to just sing a part of this song. Amen. Uh, I had two songs in mind that I love to sing. Amen. But I'm going to. Oh, Lord. <laughs> Glory to God. <laughs> Glory to God. All right, all right. Because of who you are, I give you glory. Because of who you are, I give you praise because of who you are I will lift my voice and say Lord I worship you because of who you are Lord I worship you 
because of who you are because of who you are I give you glory because of who you are I give you praise because of who you are I will lift my voice and say Lord I worship you because of who you are Lord I worship you because of who you are Jehovah Jireh my provider Jehovah Nisi, Lord, you reigned in victory. Jehovah Shiloh, my Prince of Peace, and I worship you because of who you are. And I worship you because of who you are. And I worship you because of who you are. God bless you. Amen. We thank you. Thank you, Pastor. God bless you, Pastor. Come on, Lady J. God bless you, sir. We thank God for how the Lord is blessing us. Thank you for the songs. Thank you for all that you've done. Amen. Amen. Pastor Brown talking about how she blessed the, the birth that thing. You know, they call, Mar they, they call Mary baby that holy thing. Yeah. Amen. And so if I wasn't for this woman, a guy right here, uh, holding me together and sticking around me when, when it wasn't going too good. I don't know, brothers. Have a few words, babe. Turn it Amen. Over. When I think of the goodness of Jesus. I said, when I think of the goodness of Jesus. When I think of the goodness of Jesus. When I think of the goodness of Jesus. Come on, when I think of the goodness of Jesus. When I think of the goodness of Jesus. Come on, somebody, when I think of the goodness of Jesus. When I think of the goodness of Jesus and all he has done for me, my soul cries out, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. I thank and praise God for saving me. I thank and praise God for being the head of my life, giving honor to God who's the head of my life, my spiritual father, Bishop David Wimley, my spiritual mother, First Lady Deborah Wimbley, Bishop Bankhead, Bishop Rogers, Bishop Slaughter, my brother here. I just thank and praise God for all of you being in our presence today because without him, we can do nothing. I said without him, we could do nothing. You know, I heard my aunt, Mother Goings, my brother Deacon Warren, talk about all that they have done. Back in the past, I looked at my mother over here and I said, you know, they said it all, but they didn't say that Pastor Brown and I was on the ladder. <laughs> they didn't tell what we painted. <laughs> they didn't tell we rolled up our sleeves. But it's all good because the Bible say, wherever you find your hand fit to do it. Amen. And that's the type of woman I am. Wherever I find fit to do, I do. Wherever I find that I could be, I go. Amen. So I just thank and praise God for that. I thank and praise God for Lady Wimbley and Sister Joyce Sanders from being first ladies in my lives. I had great examples of being a first lady. When Pastor Jefferson took over Bethel, they asked me, 
how do it feel to be a first lady? I didn't know. And I kind of still don't know. Because I still would roll up my sleeves. I still would take my shoes off. I still would plug up a vacuum. I still would run some dishwater. I still would wipe a window out. I would still pick up some paper. And I have rolled out the garbage can. Amen? So that I don't mind doing. Bethel called us here. And when I look at that Bethel call, Pastor Jefferson, he called me as well. So this is not just Bethel family, Bethel home. This is our home too, babe. Amen? Because I rolled out the garbage can over on Adam Street. Plenty of times. Amen? And we'll cut the grass if he let me. I just don't know how. Amen? But I just thank and praise God for being in my life. Being the head, being the Bethel's first lady is new to me, but I'm learning, and I'm getting there, and they try to make me sit down, but I can't, because that's just who I am, and that's what I have in me. So I just thank and praise God. I always tell my husband every night before we go to bed, sometimes we pray. I call him and say, let's pray before we go to sleep. And I tell him, you know, I'm proud of you. He said, baby, not proud of me, godly proud of me. Not proud because he's a pastor, but proud because of who he is. Proud because of what he does. He take great care of me. I heard Bishop Wimley say, first lady don't have to pay a bill. Neither do I. I want to pay a bill. I jumped up and got a brand new car with his name on it. But guess what I did? Pastor Jefferson, can I pay my own note? I asked to pay my own note. Can I at least get my tags every year? I asked to get my tags. Not that he asked me for them. I want to help. I likes to help. Because when I help, I be blessed. God don't let me not provide me for nothing. Amen? So again, I thank and praise God for being ahead of my life. I thank and praise God for the wife that I am to this man. And the husband that he is to me. Come on, somebody, and give me a hand praise. Because without God, I wouldn't be who I am today. Pray my strength in the Lord. Amen. Come on, give the Lord a hand praise, if you will. It all sounds good. It, it, it sounds good, too, and I enjoy the Lord. I have to put godly proud on there. Because when pride get in, you won't get baptized when you're supposed to. When pride get in, you won't live when you know you're living wrong. You won't turn live right. But when you godly proud, you know God did it. And then you don't mind coming back to water when you know you ain't got it right. You won't mind telling folks you're sorry and you ain't did nothing. We got a preacher here today all the way from Lansing. and he done preached at his own church. He done came all the way across town, across the country, across the state. I should say, in order to honor us today, if you would stand all over this building, I'm going to let God do it however he wants to do from here. He's, he's part of the PAW organization. He's been recently elevated as a young man to the position that he holds right now. I, I've been around him when he, before he really got to be pastors and preachers because I told you I hung around his old man and his old man would always have him in the midst of ministry. And so he brought him up in church. So this is a man of integrity. I, ain't, I wouldn't put no one in front of you. The Bible didn't, then I wouldn't trust in front of the saints. Amen. And so I thank God for this young man. So y'all give him your undivided attention. Amen. And we're looking for God to bless us. We do have food at the end, so don't run out until you get yourself some uh, 
food or until we do the benediction. Don't leave before somebody gets saved. Let's receive this man of God with a real good thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Mark chapter 4. Verses 35 through 41. And it appears to be custom to stand when you read the word. My prayer is that after you read it, you'll still be able to stand on the word. Your time. Try not to hurry your patience, but uh, this is my third test. testing test it's going in and out. This is my uh, third message today. First message we preached was entitled Fruit Loops. not from Muskegon, so I'll give this to the preachers that want to preach it here, but it's regarding the fact that the Bible says we'll know a tree by the fruit that it bears. But we got some end time saints who don't know how to be saints consistently, but they're saints when they want to be, and they're ain'ts when they want to be, therefore their fruit is in a loop. Catch them on Sunday, you can see fruits of righteousness. You catch them on Friday, and you see fruits of wickedness. They are in a fruit loop. Take it with it and do what you want to do with it. The next message I'll preach will be this one, but I said this is the third message because the greatest message you can ever preach is the life that you live. And when I woke up this morning, I woke up with my mind stayed on Jesus. I'm honored to be here today. Well, the Spirit of the Lord is, but I'm, I've noticed since the last time I was here, which I believe was in 18, but I might be off. But I will say this to you, Bethel, I can tell you the temperature has changed. Some of y'all will catch that tonight. But as an outsider looking in, I can tell you this. The temperature has changed since the last time I was here. In the corporate, they would tell you that the fish stinks from the head down. The Bible would tell you that the oil runs from the head down. And the fact that the temperature of this house has changed is a testament not only to the power of God, but the man of God. Your chief servant is somebody I knew before they became pastor. As he said, in fact, when we met each other, neither one of us was pastoring. We were serving. And uh, I've learned in my life that... Uh, all the acquaintances I had of my father who, as he said, would golf, and then by me being around my father so much, I met him, and we've developed our own relationship. And I often say that I got all of my father's enemies and just a few of his friends. <laughs> and Pastor Jefferson is one of those friends. And uh, 
since before coming, he's called me a few times. In fact, Mother Goins, I was scared a few times he called me because I thought maybe he was canceling the service. He said, Preach, I'm just checking in with you. Make sure everything's good. And I'm an introvert. I don't like to talk a whole lot, believe it or not. And I don't like to be on the phone long, but I notice every time we talk, at least three or four times, we talk for a good while, and you can tell what's in someone's heart by what comes out of their mouth. And I'm going to stand here and take preacher's privilege and tell you Bethel. I'm going to take privilege and tell you Bethel that your leader loves you. I don't say that everywhere I go. We will be talking about golf, and we'll be talking about Muskegon. We'll be talking about this and that. And always he lands on, yeah, I, but these saints, it just comes out because it's in his heart. And it's a burden he can't cut off. And that's the kind of leader you need who has a burden for people in their private conversation. He didn't become a man of integrity when he got voted in. He had integrity when God brought him in. And that's what qualified him. To the great ambassage, and the great cloud of witnesses, to my rear, and we're honored to stand here and grace this platform before you. I'm honored that, uh, I guess I got to practice Bishop Wembley, because I got, what was that? CT, are you with me? I got to practice that. Like, I, I would get it. I got to get it. <laughs> but I'm glad CT is with me. Christ Temple Land said, are you here? <laughs> Y'all know this church ain't no stranger. Most of the members in here are family. Uh, uh, the very first time I came, I think Mother Goins and some of them was singing. And I, I thought I was looking at Mother Marvella. I had to realize that was her sister. I said, I didn't know she, how she going to sing on y'all praise team. She ain't singing on my praise team. <laughs> they just got singing all in them. Thank God for our senior deacon, Deacon Ted Warren. He's here. He traveled with us. Amen. To our other head deacon, Deacon Benny Drain, Deacon Keith. My deacon's here. Our ministers, our praise team. Some of everybody's here. I almost, amen, set up shop here. But I'm going I'm to get on and get on. Of course, I'm honored because... Jesus is the best thing that ever happened to me, but my wife is the best thing that ever happened for me. And Lady Jan, wave your hand. She's reason 2.1 why I preach the way I preach and shout the way I shout. Jesus is the main reason, but she's 2.1 why I shout. Of course, my mother is here, and uh, I believe... Pastor, is it Pastor Brown? Hey Amen. I was chuckling in my spirit when you said that God used you as a vessel to bring forth such a one. And I can only imagine that I almost started singing, Mary, did you know that your baby boy? Because <laughs> I'm my mother's baby boy. And God has used me. Amen. In a mighty way. And I thank God that she's here. And, uh, of course, I wouldn't be what I am without her and my father, and I don't count it lightly. Amen. Our secretary is here, Sister Valerie. All of you are here. I thank God for our musician traveling with us, uh, Minister Strode and uh, Minister Cameron and my family. Everybody is here. I love them. Psalmist Harris, uh, Sister uh, Waltons, and I'm going to start. I shouldn't have called them names. I would have been good. Thank God for my wife's mother, who I call Mommy. Amen. Sister Kim, she's here. Every, I'm just, hey amen. We, 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 we. They say when your people go with you, you must be doing something all right. So either I'm lying or I'm trying, but I'm doing something. <laughs> now, hopefully, you should be tired of standing, so now you have a lot of energy to sit and stay still. Tell somebody he got a strategy. <laughs> Mark chapter 4. I hope I haven't missed anything. If I have, charge it to my head and not to my heart. Mark chapter 4, uh, verse 35 says, And the same day when the even was come, he saith unto them, Let us pass over unto the other side. Bethel, go over to the other side. 
When they had sent away the multitude, tell somebody, send some folks away. <laughs> they took him even as he was in the ship, and there were also with him other little ships. And there arose a great storm of wind, and the waves beat into the ship so that it was now full. 38. And he, Jesus, was in the hinder part of the ship, asleep on a pillow. They awake him and say unto him, Master, carest thou not that we perish? When you only got about $435, you make, sometimes you wonder, Lord, do you care that we're over here? When you have to go a season without consistent leadership, you say, Lord, do you even care that we're over here? Do you care if we perish? And he arose and rebuked the wind and said unto the sea or to the waves, peace. Be still. And the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. And he said unto them, Why are ye so fearful? How is it that ye have no faith? After all you've seen me do, how is it that you still have no faith? After I blessed you last year, how is it you have no faith? All the miracles I performed before COVID, how is it now you have no faith? I don't believe he brought me this far to leave you. And they feared exceedingly and said one to another, what manner of man is this? That even the wind, someone say wind, and the sea or wave, somebody say sea, obey him. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the church. Now, God, it's our desire that you would be glorified, that your people would be edified, and Satan would be terrified. Help us, O oh God, to bless you even now. We humble ourselves. God will take the victory but you get the glory. Help us to love you more dearly and see you more clearly and walk with you more nearly. That's our prayer and our plea. And we ask it now in the name and the authority of our blessed Lord and Savior, Jesus, the eternal Christ. We thank God and say amen. amen. Take your seats if you would, and I'd like to engage your intellect And I'd like to provoke your passions as we share our convictions tonight. I want to use for a subject, just for a thematic thrust, and extract the tension in the text, and use for points of power tonight, wind and waves. You've got wind and you've got waves. And unfortunately, the scripture Encourages us tonight that no matter whether you're dealing with wind or waves, God is God of both. I serve a God of the wind and I serve a God of the waves. Some of you, while your cognitive dissonance is allowing you right now to measure me up to see whether I can preach or not, let me help you ease your burden. I can't preach. But I would like to trouble your spirit with this thought that I know something about you that you didn't have to tell me. I know that you have gone through some things. I don't have to deal, I don't have to scroll your Facebook account to find out. But I know for a fact that there's some people in here who can wave their hand at me and say, I've gone through some hard times. I know there's somebody in here who can say that you 
haven't always had two pennies to rub together. I know you're wonderful now. The truth of the matter is you had to cry some real tears. And if the truth was told and the verdict was exposed on all of us, some of us would be crying right now. If you wasn't in the house of God seeing people and hearing information and having all these sensory inputs, you'd be at home holding your pillow tight trying to figure out what you going to do with your next move. See, I know something about you because the Bible says it rains on the just and the unjust. And if you are a child of God, the Bible says, somebody say the Bible says. It says you've got to endure hardship like a good soldier. And the Bible says to think it not strange. Help me, Holy Ghost. Concerning the fiery trials which are to try you as if you hit the trouble lottery. As though some strange thing has happened to you. The Bible, the, the Bible, the Bible says you're going to have to go through some stuff. But we got some antidotes, if you will. James, come here and tell me what you think. He says that when you fall into divers temptations or NIV says trials of many kinds to count it all joy. How can you count hardship? Joy. How can you count COVID? Praise God is joy. How can you count haters? That's joy. How can you count heartache? That's joy. How can you count people that say they'll be with you and leave you? Joy. Here's how you count it. Knowing this, that the trying of your faith works patience. And you got to let it have its perfect work. And I wonder, is there anybody in here that can say something to me like this that says, though he slay you, yet will I trust him. I don't care what you've gone through. I don't care what you're going through. You've got to learn how to maintain a peace that passes understanding. That means he'll keep your heart and your mind. What does it mean, peace, that Past understand. It means I can't explain the joy I got. So quit asking me why I shout the way I can't explain it. Quit asking me to, to quit preaching the way I preach. I can't explain it. How can I keep my mind level headed in seasons of adversity? I can't explain it. It's a peace that past understanding and the fact that I can't explain why I'm still here means it took a power that's greater than me. It was a God job that kept me here. And so come on in the community of people who got to go through. But if you're going to join this group of people that got to go through, you also got to go through it like we go through it. We don't wait. Woo. Let me talk to you because they won't say nothing. We don't wait until the battle is over. But we learn how to shout now. You don't wait till the firemen come and find out what room you in to get you out the fire. But while I'm in the room of fire, I start hollering so that the firemen know where to come get me. Is there anybody that says, Lord, I got to holler now so that you can find me in my fire. I can't wait till you discover where I am, but I'm a shout. I'm shouting before he heals me so he can know where I am. Lord, I want to be found by your favor. Be seated, please. Be seated. I got two sons. I got two sons. And I, I never had to teach them how to holler. Uh, I remember when they were very young, and uh, me and my wife would take turns. Her turn was all the time, though. 
Uh, and it'd be two in the morning, and she'd get up, and she'd go get in them. I said, what's going on? She said, I hear the baby hollering. Uh, 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 and then uh, she'd get up again. I said, where you going? You, you got, is somebody coming in? Let me get my gun. She said, no, no. That's the baby. The baby's hollering. And I said, the baby, who told the baby to holler? I said, why? What did the baby? She said, it's either a dirty diaper or it's hungry. Uh, uh, Y'all slow tonight. Uh, uh, I said, did the baby go to advanced education, theory of dialectics and analytics to understand the cognitive progression to holler, to cause a transfusion of information to his mother to come get him? No, the baby is a baby. But something on the inside of the baby that says when my diaper is dirty, I need to holler until somebody come. When I'm hungry, I need to holler until mama come. Is there anybody here that says your miracle is in your mouth? Be seated, please. Be seated, please. Uh, I never seen so many quiet mouths trying to be fed, but your miracle is in your mouth. Your breakthrough is in your mouth. If you shut up, you won't go up. But if you open your mouth, the levees will break. If you open your mouth, the billows will roll. If you open your mouth, the floodgates of heaven will open. Be seated, please. Be seated. I got to deal with the text. A, a bishop won't let me come back. I'll deal with the text, I promise. Yeah. Uh, but the Bible says, the Bible says, somebody say the Bible says. I got to hurry along. I promise, I promise, I promise, I promise, I promise I hurry along. But the Bible says, Jesus said, let's go over to the other side. Uh, uh, it's interesting from a theological standpoint, if you do a critical analysis of the text, watch it. He said, let us go over to the other side. He didn't say we were going. He says, let us go. Who said it? Jesus. He don't need permission. He just need prerogative. He said, let's go to the other side. Now, if I say that to you, we got to start figuring out a process. Let's go out to eat. All right. Question one, where are we going? Who driving? What you like? You vegan? Not today. This your cheat day? Who paying? Who tipping? Do they take reservations? Is it a buffet? Is it COVID? Is it takeout? We got questions to ask because it's humanity trying to get it done. But when Jesus said, let's go over, all they had to do was like, get in and let's go. That's what the Lord told me to tell you. Quit trying to figure out everything God told the man of God. Just get in the boat and go over to the promised land. Who knows if you'll build? Just go over. Who knows who gonna join the church? Just go over. Go to the other side. Too many saints are spending too much time trying to figure Pastor Jefferson out. Watch this. Let me help you. If you discover Jesus, you'll figure him out. Because the Lord told him not to lord over the sheep. And if he's wrong, God will get him. But God going to get you when you can't follow him. Because that's his plan. If you want to be blessed, obey the man of God. Because your abundance is attached to your obedience. I need to see a financial report first. I need to see his resume. How much 
much experience do he got? Well, before we open his, <laughs> do I know? Do I need to go get George from '86? <laughs> Help me, Holy Ghost. The Bible says when he had sent away the multitude. Somebody say sent them away. God was getting ready to perform a miracle in the storm, but before he performed it, he had to send some people away. Everybody close your ears. Pastor, the Lord says that the next miracle he's going to perform, in order for your split ends to grow, you have to cut them. I remember talking to my wife, she, and I said, what's going on with your hair? She says, I'm growing it out. She says, so I'm going to go get it cut. <laughs> Look at all the men. <laughs> if I'm growing it out, why would I cut it? She says, honey, there's a thing called split ends. And as your hair grows, it starts to split. So you have to go and cut just above the split so it will continue to grow. And you got to learn that when people's vision starts splitting away from God, you got to go just above them and cut them off so that you can keep growing to the next level. If you got to leave, let me give you gas money. But if you're ready for the next level, if you're ready for the next move, come where the table is spread and the feast of the Lord is going on. We mean Jesus over here. You got to be baptized in his name. You got to be filled with his power. You got to live a life that pleases unto him. And I thank God for COVID. Y'all didn't hear what I said. I thank God for COVID. I was with a pastor. He says, man, I can't wait till COVID's over. I said, I'm so glad it's here. God said, the only people who come to my church now is people who want to. I ain't got to hate. I ain't have to kick nobody out. But the people come now say, Pastor, I'm coming to church. If I can go to Walmart, if I can go to Myers, if I can go to Cancun, if I can get on Spirit Airlines, then I ought to find my way to the house of God. And many pastors, these pastors don't even realize that God has done you a favor. Because now you got a room full of intercessors. A room full of people who believe God. I didn't say go out here and jump in front of a car. I didn't say don't wear your mask. Just make sure it's a mask and not a muzzle. Make sure you still open your mouth and give God the praise that is due. Tell somebody, send them away. I love you, but I, I, I love you. You just ain't assigned to my destiny. I ain't mad at you. You're just not attached to my abundance. That's all. Ain't no hard feelings. In fact, I'm so overflowing, I still got something to give you. Not, not what it would have been if you had been over here. I'm trying. The Bible says... They took him in the ship. And the Bible, watch this. The Bible says when Jesus got in the ship, notice Mark's connotation. He says, around them were other little ships. Why is that in there? Because God loves us. Uh, the, the ship Jesus got on wasn't a little. But every other ship that didn't have Jesus. The Bible says it was. Okay, y'all. The Bible says they went with Jesus. And the Bible says everything around them was little. But the ship Jesus was in. Why are you mad at me? Because I let Jesus get on my ship. Why are you mad at me? Because I surrendered my life to God. And he started blessing me. You still little. I'm over here growing. And you mad at me when you can submit to the same Jesus I surrender to. Don't get mad at the size of my ship. 
Why don't you humble yourself under his mighty hand and he can exhort you in due season? If you ain't got Jesus, you ain't got nothing. Oh, here we go. One of them high rolling Holy Ghost. Here we go with a sold out for Jesus. Here we go with one of them preachers. You better believe it. I didn't choose this doctrine. This doctrine chose me. And it's a precious teaching to be called in this Laodicean age, this age of spiritual perversion, to be called to carry a precious truth. It's a privilege. And if you are in here and your ship has Jesus on it, which means you have been baptized in his name and filled with his spirit, you are no longer a little ship. And that means you ought to change your perspective and your prayer life and your worship. If you ain't a little ship, but you are a great thing in God, the Bible says, greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. How you want the same kind of favor I got when I got Jesus on board and you don't? I'm baptized in his name and you not. I'm filled with his spirit and you not. Now I just said it's going to rain on the just and the unjust. It don't mean I don't have no problems. It means my problems don't have me. Okay. Let, let me give it to you because you don't believe me. You don't believe me. The Bible says there rose a storm of wind. Uh, 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 are you sure? There, there arose a great storm of wind? Because I thought y'all told me that uh, uh, the reason you got all those problems is because you need to get yourself in church. That's what y'all told me. Yeah, the devil beating you up. You need to get in church and sit down. And let God bless you. But I found out I didn't have no real problems until I got up in the church living for the Lord. Can't say what I want to say. Can't do what I used to do. Oh, you, you, you cut me off. I know how to get you back. But now I got to hold my peace and let the Lord fight my battle. If I needed money, I knew how to get it. I ain't need no extra hours. I just needed. Okay, never mind. But I knew how to get it. But now that I'm in the side of the Lord, here's my real issue. Is there anybody that can testify and say you ain't had no real problems until you was truly sold out for God? Which means that when life hits you hard, you ought to shout because it's an indication that the devil can't stand that you took his position. Y'all miss what I said. Every time you open your mouth and say glory to God, the devil get irritated because he remembered that when he was in heaven in glory, he used to have that position and God upgraded and got you and you and you uh, and told you to worship him and praise him. And the devil over there saying, I used to do that uh, and I can't do it no more. Of course he's upset and that's why I'm going to keep my mouth open. Because I respect my position now. I'm joint heirs with Christ. I'm a chosen generation, a royal priesthood. I'm a holy nation and a peculiar people. Tell somebody I know who I am. Just like Paul said, I am what I am by the grace of God. Tell somebody grace did this. Tell them, no, they don't believe you. Give them some street. Tell them I woke up like this. Yeah, when I was born again, I came out with new activities. If any man be in Christ, they are a new creature. Old things pass away. Behold, all things become new. And now when you lie on me, I say, look, fly on me. I didn't got to get you back. I just learned how to hold my peace. Let the Lord fight my battles. I stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. But the Bible says, be seated, please, I can't preach. The Bible says, I got to leave you alone and bid you farewell, but the Bible says a storm came. You mean to tell me Jesus on your ship don't exempt you from storms? Uh, uh, I wonder if God is real. I'm going through so much. It, that might be how you know he real. Because whom he loves, 
he chastened. And some of us keep thinking that God has left us because of what we go through. But the Lord told me to tell you that when the devil is upset with you, he'll bother you too. But just know that God had to give him permission because you his possession. Ah. I heard Pastor Slaughter got in trouble with the law. Uh, uh, he must not be doing something right. It might be what I'm doing right. Oh, I remember the Bible says there was a baby that was born blind. And the disciple comes to Jesus and says, who did sin that this baby was born blind? The Lord said, ain't nobody messed up. He said, this has happened so that my glory can be seen. And the Lord told me to tell some of you, quit crying about your storm. It's getting ready to be evidence that the glory of the Lord is real. And you have been chosen to be picked out to trust it with trouble. And I wonder, is there anybody in here that can make the devil a liar? The devil has been attacking you. He gave you bad news. And your response was not quitting. Your response was, I'm going to go on and see what the end is going to be. I'm going to stick with Jesus. And I'm going to serve him till I die. And if I got to die, I'm going to die in faith. Some of you ready to quit church? When really you ought to realize you are picked out to be picked on because God could trust you with trouble. See, if you, if, if you go outside right now and find a bunch of money and you come in here and start running around the church, that don't move me. But if you go outside, somebody call you, give you some bad news, you come back in here and run around the church, that moves me. Because you just did something an unregenerated, unconverted sinner can't do. They can't worship God in spirit and in truth when there is hardship. But when you're a child of God, when he blesses you, you give him praise. And when he trusts you with trouble, you still give him praise. Because I will bless the Lord at all times. And his praise shall continuously... Bible says... Jesus was on board, but they still had a storm. I want to tell somebody in here, Jesus is still in your life. Even though you're going through. Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. The Bible says the waves beaten to the ship and that it was now full. Here's where I got to extract now for your revelation. Notice what the text says. It says they in the ship. It's a great ship. Jesus is on board. The waves are beating up. Oh, next thing you know, there must be a hole or an overflow. But now the waves are in the boat. As opposed to the boat being in the water. Uh, uh, notice what's going on now. Uh, the ship was designed to be in the water. But Jesus is giving us revelation because he says, the waves have beat so tumultuously that they are now in the boat. If you don't get anything else, please get this. The church of God is the ship of Zion that Jesus is on board. And no matter how much this world beats against our ship, we can't allow them to get in us. I want to tell somebody in here, you don't have to allow the warfare that's going on outside of you to become you. But you have to stay right no matter how much wrong is done to you. You got to stay holy no matter what comes against you. It's one thing to be in trouble. It's another when you let trouble get in you. That's the problem with so many believers. They try to respond equivocally to what comes against them. But you got to respond like a believer will. Bible says the issue became when the water got in the boat. If you know anything about the geographical context, you know that going across to Gardines, storms was common because it was in between mountainsides and wind often blew strong in between mountainsides. A storm was not unique. It was not a strange thing. The strange thing was when the water got inside the boat. Which means that it ought to be a strange thing when you allow things around you to get inside you. What? Know ye not that your body? 
See, too many people come into church with STDs now. I said we got too many saints coming to church with STDs. Spiritually transmitted diseases. They lazy on your job, now you lazy. You supposed to be the influencer on your job. There's a committee and a quorum who don't agree with the pastor, now you don't agree with the pastor. You supposed to be effecting change, not becoming the change. Where are the people who says that I'm going to influence those around me? They're not going to influence me. No matter how much comes against me, I'm not going to let wickedness get inside of me. Even though we are in the world, we are not of the world. It's sad when people get beat up by the streets. They come in church and get beat up some more. They come into church and tell you all their problems, and then we go out like, woo. They gonna be at work. They just woo. Did you hear what she said? She said she's dealing with this. He said, I thought he was a preacher. Wait a minute. Y'all told me that when I got issues, I need to bring it to the Lord in prayer and come to the altar. And then as soon as I come into the church and tell y'all what I need prayer for, then you talk about me. Every time I do an altar call, I let them know that's not a walk of shame. That's a walk of victory. But we shame people who get up in the seat and come down. When we say, is there anybody here that need deliverance from alcohol? And we see a deacon get up. We're like, what? I thought he was saved. He is saved. That's why he's getting up and coming down. You might not be saved because you got stuff ain't told nobody. And you still there. In the name of Jesus, be delivered right now. In the name of Jesus, that taste of alcohol. I revise you in Jesus' name. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I speak cleansing. I speak wholeness. You shall never drink again, but you shall be drunk with a new wine. Drunk in the Holy Ghost. Out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. Silver and gold have I not but such as I have, give out of thee in the name of Jesus. Be filled. Open your mouth. Speak Holy Ghost. Speak Holy Ghost. Speak. Speak. Wind and waves. He's the master. Blow Holy Spirit in the name. Where are you, Zion? Where are you, Bethel? Where are you, Temple? This is what we fasted for. This is what we prayed for. In the name of Jesus, be delivered. Be set free. In the name of Jesus, I command you to walk in the name of Jesus. Be buried in Jesus. Be covered in Jesus. You will never be the same. In Jesus' name, your obedience just got you delivered. Your obedience just got you delivered. In Jesus' name, speak, Holy Ghost. Speak, speak out of your belly, out of your belly, out of your belly, rivers, living water. It's time to be free. It's time to be free. You just made a walk of victory. Pull on my arm. That's how God, he's pulling you out. He's pulling you out. I know you're messed up, but he's pulling you. I know you're messed up. He still love you. You're a man of God. You're a man of God. From this day forward, be free. No more alcohol, no more weed. You're free, you're free. Yeah! It's time the wind to blow. It's time for you to be who God wants you to be. It's time, it's time, touch. From the 
living God. Ah! Yes, Holy Ghost. Yes, Holy Ghost. Yes, Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Holy Ghost. Not religion. Holy Ghost. Power. 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 Ghost power, Holy Ghost power. I need you to give them glory. Holy Ghost power. The Lord came and get you. He wasn't going to leave you. But he loved you enough to find you where you are. Jesus loved you. I don't care what the world says about you. Be a man of God. Live for him. It's not too late. It's not too late. Power. Wonder working power. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. No more church. It's time to build a kingdom. Men of integrity, men of standard. I command you right now ha, to lock arms with your pastor. Ha, whatever he needs, ha, God's going to bless you through your obedience. Ha, I promise you. Ha, your overflow is going to be attached to your leader. Serve the Lord. The water is trouble. Get in the pool. the same way I came but I want to see the glory of the Lord after COVID After COVID attempted to silence the church for almost two years, I wouldn't dare come back in with a grand reopening and go back to what I left. I need a greater glory to be seen every time I come into his house. Coming to this altar will never be a walk of shame. It's a walk of victory. And somebody here today, you have the law of God, but you don't have the better covenant. You don't have the power of God. You know the ways of God, but you can't live nothing that you know to do because you don't have power. 
the Lord says, I will pour out my spirit. I don't care what church you grew up in, Baptist, Methodist, African, Methodist, Episcopal, UB, I don't care about none of that. I want to know, have you been buried into the church of God? If you have not received the baptism of the Holy Ghost, notice God in the text, he's Jesus. He is the master of the wind and the waves. You missed it. The waves represent troubles you can see. He can master everything you see. You see children acting up, he's a master of that. But he's also the God of the wind. The things you cannot see. And watch this. We over here fighting waves. When we ain't talking to Jesus who can fight the wind. These problems we see popping up, those are waves. And you trying to fix waves by dealing with waves. You don't fix storms of wave storms by fixing wave storms. You fix the storms by dealing with the wind. Some of you, the reason why you're going through is because God has not breathed the wind of the Holy Ghost on you. And that's why the waves are beating you up so much that they're now in your boat. That's why the people you around influence you and their un un unrighteousness and their iniquities are inside of you now. Because the waves beat on the ship until the waves got in it. The whole time Jesus was in it. Which means you can be contaminated even if you got Jesus. But tonight, somebody say, but tonight. But tonight. That struggle is over. We ain't going to roar and, and roll and row and row. At this point, we're going to go and get Jesus who's resting with us. He's resting in the stern of our ships. And he says, all you got to do is wake me up. And notice what he said. He said, peace, be still. It looks like one sentence is actually in the Greek, two statements. He says, peace, be still. He said, peace to the wind. He said, be still to the waves. Y'all slow tonight. In other words, he says, everything you see, he says, I'll speak to that. And all the demonic forces that you can't see, causing all the problems you do see, he says, I can say peace to every demon, peace to every witch, peace to every warlock. He will deal with your wind and your waves. Bethel Church, I charge you as an under-shepherd invited in with spiritual authority, I charge you to cover every person that came to the altar. That is not temporary victory, but it's a permanent transformation. Pastor, these men have inspiration. Now they need information. They need to be indoctrinated. They need to know the baptism the way you know it. Not because you know it, but the way you know it. Because they gonna go get somebody you can't reach to build an army over here in Muskegon. Because you ain't competing against other churches. You're competing against the witches and the warlocks. You're competing to take dominion over this region. And you gotta stand up and be a man and woman of God. I apologize for holding you so long. But I pray that God has sent me here to just help you go another further. You got the right pastor. 
you got the right Savior. And I'll throw this in for free. You got the right spirit. In case you did not know, my name is John Slaughter. And I pray God approves this message. God bless you. Come on, where my sound? Thank you. Put them hands together for Jesus. God is good. It's one thing to know we're gonna get you, we're gonna get you out of here, but God sent for him here for about five or six of y'all. Everybody else just hang around for the festivities. But what I heard him say, Bethel, is that I've been telling you we're at a turning point. And every now and then you gotta draw a line in the sand. And that's where you begin your transition. So without any doubt, you need to be born again. If you're here and haven't been born again, that brother that stood, brother, brother Rick, he, already, he came to the altar this morning, Bishop. He told me this morning, I'm joining this church. And then he bust, up a, bust a mood at night and ran up to the altar, and God touched him again. Because you can't hang around good preaching and good teaching and God don't move you. You can't hang around good understanding and God won't allow you to get better. So we honor the men and women of God. The men that y'all see running up here, them Bethel Knights. They ain't too proud to let you know God is working on them. I promise you, if you're here right now, you have not been born again. I'm surrounded by some great men of God here. I teach saints, go where you can be saved. Did you hear what I said? Go where you can be saved. If you can't be saved under this ministry, go where you can be saved. If you can't sit them under somebody you don't like where you at, I hope they don't get mad at me. I'm telling you, go where you can be saved. Because you can't get to heaven any old way. You've got to do this God's way. If you're here by visitation, we're glad you came to join us. I know you didn't know it was going to be God talking to you like that. But he knew you was going to be here. And so if you're not in a position where you trust that you can walk out of here and be trusted with trouble, you ought to stand to your feet, give us a couple minutes to pray for you specifically. If you don't have the understanding that I need Jesus in my life, I'm looking at some folks, I know you've been saved all your life, everybody ain't where you at. Look down your road and see, is he talking to you? Because he ain't talking to me. I need to find wherever God is and dwell there. Come on, one more time for the bishop, the word of God. Do me a favor, while you're, while you're clapping, I want to sow a seed into Bishop's life there, Bishop Slaughter. Get, get an offering, get an offering. I, I, don't make me look at scripture now. We're doing this out of love. Don't make me find some scripture and tell you how you should give to a prophet. You get a prophet reward that if you sow into the man, cut his, his, uh, he give you spiritual gifts, you give natural gifts. I teach saints, just give because you love God. That little five or ten, it ain't going to even get you a Big Mac pretty soon. I tell the saints, give a Whopper and not a Whopper Junior. Give a Whopper with cheese. Then I know I'm going to get $5. Praise the Lord. And I want you to remember that. We didn't invite you out just to get no money. We want your soul renewed. We are being re-energized here. I am. If didn't nobody else get nothing, I, my toes was tingling. I felt God move. And I'm teaching saints, if you get baptized in Jesus' name, seek the Holy Ghost. I'm telling you, yeah, I ain't got Bible for this because it told them to tarry in the upper room. But I believe that sometimes God comes when you ain't necessarily looking for him. So I'm going to start having on purpose tarrying services. Don't get mad at me. Don't send me no letters. I just want my saints to be available to come get the Holy Ghost. Come tarry, come speak some scriptures, let some understanding. Y'all hear me, Bethel? Look here, we need to make sure we're operating in scripture. Amen. I'd be apologizing all day, Pastor, because it seemed like it was going too long. But I, what I realized is that some of y'all don't understand how important this is. The Bible said it. Repent. 
get baptized? Some of y'all. And only the folks that just got saved last week. Only the people that go to Bethel. It say everybody. Some of us got to just come back to water. Amen. When Philip baptized the eunuch because they seen water, it don't say when that eunuch got the Holy Ghost. Praise the Lord. And so we want to make sure we don't start out, out running the scripture. Wherever you are, this is what I'm saying and I'm done. But well, before you leave, talk to one of these pastors. Talk to one of these ministers. Don't leave here without. That's what happens. That's what I, I'm going to give you time to get it right. My st the team of cooks has been cooking all day. All week, matter of fact. Praise the Lord. So when we dismiss, I want you to hurry up and get downstairs so we can get situated so we can eat and go home. We ain't doing no to go. This ain't Red Wook. We ain't getting no to go unless my visitors from out of town need to hit that road. All the rest of y'all and maybe my bitch, y'all pray for pastor. I just want to do things decent and in order. We didn't, we didn't serve it to just make it to go. I want to look, look, amen? I don't even know the menu, but I can smell it cooking. Come on, everybody get an offering. Come on, I need both baskets. And just come from wherever you are. Come from wherever you are. Sow a seed. Write a check, Lady J, whatever your pen write. Come on, saints, we ain't going to belabor the point. Paul had to apologize to them folks in Corinthians because if he said, if I robbed you of one thing, I didn't let you sow into my life. We thank God. We thank God. We thank God. I heard the pastor was preaching, teaching, God bless you, sir. I, somebody got blessed tonight. If that word was for you, give God a hand praise. If that word was for you. I heard, the, I heard the bishop look back and say, give me some oil. I said, the oil is in you. We thank God for all that came out. All the churches that took time out. All the families that came out. All the ministers, all the preachers. I honor you. I thank you for the love we show. Come on, Lady J. Come on. Come on. Take the mask off. We thank God. We're going to dismiss. Great to have you. We'll let my, my wife pray us out of here. Amen. If you could repeat after me. At this time, we dismiss from not from this present, from where the place that we're going. I speak peace into your life. I speak peace into your heart. I speak peace into your finances. I speak peace into your mind. I speak peace. I speak peace. I speak peace. In Jesus' name. Amen. So if you, if you go down and out the 